Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you decide to tune into this Facebook Live. I welcome you here. My name is Luciana Brown. I am the Multicultural Outreach Coordinator for POPIN, which stands for Family Net, I mean, it stands for Parents of the Panhandle Information Network, and that is under the Organization of Family Network on Disabilities. And so today I am here to talk to you about helping with homework. There are so many different questions that parents ask on how to make homework fun, uh, how to make sure that their children are um, having the correct homework space and what they can do to help. And so we are here to give you that workshop information today and we pray and hope that it is very, very um, informative for you and your children. So as usual, I'm gonna share my screen because I have a little housekeeping things I wanna get um, make sure everybody knows about our organization and just to um, make sure that we are all on the same page as we are sharing information about our homework. And so as you can see, we have our little one up here helping with homework and we are welcoming you here. If you are tuning in for the first time, we want to um, advise you that we are not attorneys, we're not doctors, we're not psychologists. So we don't do any type of diagnosis or any kind of SSI application, none of that. We simply just provide support, resources, and make sure that you have exactly what you need to make sure that your child is successful. And if we don't have the information, we help you identify options and places that you can go that may be able to provide that information for you. So a little bit about FND, we are a nonprofit. 501c3 organization. Uh, we are funded by the Department of Education and we are a grassroots, family-centered, family-driven um, organization that was started in 1985 by a group of family members and friends that had children with disabilities that came together for support and resources. And so one thing that is so unique about Family Network on Disabilities is we have that compassionate side, but we also have the, the training that we need as well. And, and um, the thing about it is um, most of the board and directors and all of our program staff either have a disability or have children with disability. So we're here for you. And so we're gonna go ahead and get, ahead and get started. Okay, you may ask, why homework? Why are we talking about homework? What's so important about homework that we need to discuss? Well, we're gonna discuss that. So research says that um, quality homework has an impact on student achievements that is three times more than um, a family's educational level, occupation, or income. So there are several things that affect our homework and that can help improvement. And one of the things is preparation. So we all know that homework is an extension of the classroom assignment. So whatever is going on in the classroom, homework that is being brought on has, has that extra layer of learning on it so that child can um, practice home uh, with the retention it better, um, help students um, prepare for participation for activities and assignments and they're more likely to be more confident and more engaged in class when they have an understanding because they've done their homework so we all know that um, books to bring home what materials to complete uh, for the assignments and how long they would need to complete that assignment and so also as, as the child gets older if they have due dates so your child will need to plan estimate time for preparation and organize Homework also helps out with new skills. So when our children do their homework, they're practicing important life skills such as preparation, time management, learning to make sure that they have materials that they need, as I stated before, and also learning how to manage their time for completing their homework. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. So these skills are um, skills that they need as an adult to pay bills, job, time management, an important element for a job well done. So it also helps with study habits as well. So students do their homework and they do it well, function more effectively in the classroom. They learn how to engage studying time at a young age. It helps us their practices throughout life, through high school, college, continuing education programs, and knowing how to use resources such as libraries, reference materials, internet, or learn study habits that they will need that would be a great asset as um, they grow up into adulthood. And another um, area, the fourth area, would be assessment. So we all know that as children, 
to grow from preschool up to whatever age that they're in, they're going to be tested. So reviewing and practicing what is learned in a classroom helps retain information that will be later found on tests. Because the more they hear it, the more they learn it, the more it's retained. And last but not least, homework helps with self-discipline. Not only will homework help your child um, develop good study habits and an attitude about learning, it will also help teach your child about working independently and encourage self-discipline, responsibility, and the love of learning. So one of the fun facts that I want to, to give you that I didn't know, but I remember it now because we did this in college, but it takes about 21 days for something to become a habit. So one thing about homework, be consistent. I know sometimes we have after school activities and different things like that, but you gotta find some fun ways to incorporate homework, incorporate reading. Like sometimes when I pick my son up or I take him to school, because it's about a 30 minute drive, I encourage him to read for 15 or 20 minutes on the way to school. And so that gets that time in. Um, make sure that uh, your child knows that homework is to be done at a regular time, regular place, every day, so that we create a good study habit. Also, it takes about three times minimum to hear or to review something before it sticks. Homework helps our children to retain information learned at school. So as they're doing um, information at home, and as well as at school, the more they hear it, the more they do it, the more they retain it. So that's very, very important. So one of the things I want to share with you is that the national PTA recommendations fall in line with general guidelines suggested by research Harris Cooper. So 10 to 20 minutes per night is recommended for first grade, an additional 10 minutes per grade left after that. So for an example, 20 minutes a night for second grade, 120 minutes for 12th grade. High school students may sometimes do more depending on their classes um, that they take. So if you have a child that's in first grade, they'll do 10 to 20 minutes. For second grade, they'll do 30 minutes. For um, third grade, they'll do 40 minutes. So it just depends on what your child, because I know with my son, um, it takes about 10, 15 minutes to do his homework, depending on what it is, and most likely it's just math. But then we have another 20, 30 minutes that he does reading every day. And that's very, very encouraged. So making time for work for you. So based on a general rule, a senior in high school should spend 120 minutes or two, day, two hours a day on homework. So let's think about this for a moment. In an average household, is this really happening? I'll be honest. It's not happening in my household because sometimes um, I'm not here, so daddy takes over. And I'm not saying daddies don't do a good job, but sometimes because I'm mostly doing it, we're not in the same routine and he does things a little bit different. So we have to kind of um, maneuver and change things up a little bit. But one thing that is really, really happening is a lot of technology screen time, phones, cell phones, um, tablets, computers, TV, screen time, playtime, texting, and non-school related internet surfing rates ahead of homework. And I am not surprised. That's one of the things that I, I'm very careful when I say this, but I am not a real big fan of technology. I love it, but it has its rightful place when it's the right time. And so these activities may be important for socialization skills and exercise and communication building, but neither of them strengthen critical thinking skills the way homework can. And I was just sharing this the other day, I was telling someone, we've gotten so used to programming phone numbers in our phone, that if something happened to our phone, would we really remember? So we have to remember, we wanna encourage those critical thinking skills, we wanna um, encourage rememorization and all the things that help our children grow and expand their learning capacity. So try not to bombard your child's schedule with extracurricular activities after school because this would interfere with much needed study time and completing homework. One of the things that we chose to do because our, our son loves sports, we do sports on the weekend. We don't do anything through the week because we understand how it's important, not only for him to get his homework done, but also to get the proper, proper rest and spend time with his mother and father. So this is one of the things that I laughed at when I first saw it. So basically, there are a lot of excuses that people come up with about their homework. So it's amazing that our children never seem to want to do it. 
yet when it comes down to them being the most creative. So we can choose to encourage our children to channel that same creativity in for making excuses and do their homework. So a classic excuse may be playing sick, uh, pets eating homework, or mom and dad didn't get my school supplies. So suspect something if your child frequently says this all the time. So learning and sharing ideas in a group of parents and educators is always a good um, idea to ask for suggestions of what other parents are doing. Are they having any struggle? I just saw on my son's um, school page the other day that one of the parents was having a hard time getting their son's home where he had a project done, but it's because he lost it. So they, they were reaching out to other parents to kind of find out what the assignment was. So ask, you can ask questions on a, on a parent um, school elementary page, um, a support group, ask single parents if you're a single parent. Um, another idea you can ask about is what if a child has, <clears throat> what if a parent has more than one child, so it's difficult to focus on the homework needs. And so that's some of the things that you can discuss if that's um, one of the solutions that you want, that you're having a problem with. So problems to solutions, learning styles, strengths, areas of needs, and planning. So let's identify the problems that prevent our children from doing their homework and come up with some solutions. So it's very important to know your child's learning style. So everyone has one. Um, how your child interprets information and prefers to learn is going to drive their child's learning experience. So this will help them with the type of tools he or she uses, what activities um, they will develop the interest in doing homework that will eventually develop into study habits. And so that's very important, like me. I'm a visual learner, but I'm also an auditory learner. So if I'm reading as well as hearing what I'm reading, sometimes when I'm studying um, for something, if I find it online, I read it in front of me and I also hear it. But you have some children that if they hear it, they, 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 that strengthens their study time. But you have some children that if they see it, it strengthens. So you know your child's learning style is very, very important. And so that'll help in the areas of their strengths. But what type of homework does your child like doing? Is it spelling, math? Um, do they like reports? If you know your child's interests and their strengths, you can help with how they're completing their homework and make it more interesting for them. For example, if your child prefers research-based assignments, then an assignment can have an element um, to research it using the internet with supervision. Of course, you want to make sure that's in place. And so um, if that helps them learn, I know a lot of kids are in to these um, YouTube videos. So having supervision there while they're looking for different things is very helpful. Um, identifying the type of homework your child is struggling with, perhaps it's science or math. Um, I know my son struggles with math. So I found a couple little fun games online that can match with what he's already doing and that kind of help out add to those skills. And so if your child has an IP, um, when it looks down to the present level of performance, if your child does not fully understand the homework, um, you and your IP team can gauge where he or she needs more support. And last but not least, you want to make sure you plan. So based on your child's collection of information, your child, uh, problem areas, solutions, you want to develop a plan and keep a reminder of yourself to keep pens, paper, poster boards as well on hand as well as a list of um, movies or different YouTube channels that may be interested and related to your child's need. And so this is one of the things I really, really love. I believe it's very important to set those ground rules, um, communication, and explore together. So communication is very important because first of all, you want to establish a working relationship with the teacher, decide what's the best way to communicate, Regularly, I always encourage my parents to do email because it keeps a paper trail. So if you have to go back and look at a question, I know our teachers sent out information on um, a new um, homework that they were doing. It might have been difficult, so she sent us a link. Um, if your school district has a communication, a parent portal, that's important. Like I said, my school has a parent portal as well as we have a Facebook page as well. Um, you want to establish ground rules at home that everyone must follow. Um, I have to talk with my husband about this sometime, and we're we're good. But you know, how are we helping with homework? 
doing it for them and, and helping them is two different things. So you want to make sure that every um, body is on the same page when it comes down to homework for your child, as well as study locations um, and needs as well. You want to make sure there's a good setting area for your child. Um, you can make a homework zone area, have a certain place where that child knows that they could go for a quiet space to do their homework. And so explore together. There may be times where your child may have a project. I know my son, when he was at um, one particular school, um, he had to do a, a black history project. And so we took time looking up different things on the internet that talked about black history. Matter of fact, we went to a black history program last night. And some of the things that I did not know, I learned about. So it could be fun not only for your child, but it can also be fun and educating for you as well. So research says that smell, touch, taste, sound, taste, and movement at pack learning. So senses impact learning. So one of the things I do for my sons when he gets home, I like to unwind maybe five or 10 minutes and then eat a snack if needed. And sometimes he eats a snack with it. But the 2005 study published in Psychology of Music found that workers who listen to music while working had a higher productivity than those that did. Now, I'm going to say that is true because I listen to music when I work and it seems like I can get things done. And so we've also started doing that as well at home. So studies, authors speculate that this could be because mood boosts, um, music boosts moves, improve motivation, particularly among students who are struggling to remain motivated to keep their work done. Music might provide a respite for some stress and exhaustion, exhaustion of studying and inspiring to keep at it. Uh, fidget toys for kids, um, make sure that if they're doing it at home, it's not something that they take to school without permission. Um, eating while they're focusing, popcorn, little um, crackers or something like that. Um, but try to avoid sweets to cause kids to crash um, later. And movement, sometimes you have to get up and move around. Um, remember also laughter is a key to the learning process as well. And so this is something I really, really, really encourage is reading. So in addition to providing suitable conditions at home for study, a great way to highlight homework is to study to take time to read ourselves. So reading the newspapers is sometimes what me and my son do. He, while he's reading something, I will read something. And if it's something um, like we read the Bible together sometimes. And so he'll read out of his book and I'll read out of mine and we'll come together and talk about it. So if you have more than one child, they'll try to coordinate all children together um, on the same homework time. But if you have a large family, this will be a perfect time to designate a quiet time for reading. So remember, it takes 21 days to form a habit. So you have to have patience. So you have to um, ask yourself, What's your ideal situation for reading together? Um, is it when in the daytime? Is it in the evening? So establish those times and it'll really, really help. So one thing I want to encourage is patience. When you compare me to another child, you lose sight of the child that I am. I'm uniquely me and just uniquely you. And so that's one of the things that we encourage for our parents as well as our professionals, that every child is different. Um, don't yell at your child about the homework. They resist them doing it. It's really easy for us to lose our cool. But try to teach your kids something within this because it may just be something hard concept for them to get. So have patience um, for them to create better study habits. You can use different methods, reward system, and encouraging habits that may help with them completing their homework. So I know with my son, as I said, again, we, he struggles with math. So a lot of times he chooses to do what he struggles with the hardest first and then everything else later. So resources, teachers, tech books, electronics, internet. Remember that you have resources available for you. Um, I am thankful for my teacher that my son has because anytime I message her a question or a problem, she always responds. She's willing to collaborate and um, see what is best for us to do for our child. Um, make sure you have available textbooks at home. I know for my son, he gets reading books at school, but sometimes we go to the library. Um, electronic devices that help out, as well as the internet is at our feet, at our hands for uh, finding out information. 
So families can be a resource as well. So current events on Saturdays, I know here in Leon County, we have tons and tons of different events that are going on. So home spelling bees could be good. I know um, sometimes we do speed spelling at home in the, in, in the car. Um, a buddy night or a special mood night will help out to make sure that um, everyone is kind of involved and staying on the same page. And you can coordinate this with other students and parents um, to exchange numbers and at home. So you can have a fun night of studying. And I'm pretty sure it's, my son is in the third grade, but as he gets older, that's some of the things that I may incorporate in so he can have fun and an enjoyable time. And a lot of times when you're having fun, it sticks. And so those are some tips and some resources that I want to give you on helping with homework. And it just got me thinking about different things I can do now. And so I hope this was very informative for you. Again, if you have any questions, you can always, always reach out to us. As you can see on our screen, we have several, several programs all across Florida. We cover the whole state of Florida, except Poppin is in the North Florida. PSN is in um, Central Florida. Uh, Penn is in South Florida. And we have our Family Star Services. They help families who have special health care needs. And we have our trust services. So please, please, please. Um, reach out to us if you need our help. And we have our FND University that has several, several, several uh, courses of information on it and this at your um, disposal as well. As well as please send us an evaluation. Let us know how we did. Let us know we gave too much information, not enough, but I didn't explain it well. We are here to make sure that you have the best for your child. And so again, my name is Luciana Brown. I'm the Multicultural Outreach Coordinator for Poppin. And if you need to get in touch with me, my, my email is Luciana, L-U-C-I-A-N-A at fndfl.org. Or you can look on our website for more information. That's www.fndusa.org. Or you can call our 1-800 number, and that's 1-800-825-5736. So thank you again for tuning in. I am always excited to see our parents um, come in and just ask questions about what we're doing and how can we how can we help them. And so go to our Facebook page, pop the Facebook page and like us. We always are sharing information that is going on around um, the cities that we serve. As well. We serve from uh, Panama, Mariana area, Panama City area, all the way down to Gainesville. So we're always sharing information and fun events that we will be to if you want to stop by and get resources from us. So thank you again for tuning in and have a great, excellent day and enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.